I look like a normal, reasonable human being with like an acceptable amount of like muscle tone, right? But still in my head, there was like this crazy just distortion, body dysmorphia. And so what do you think the end result of this? Does anyone think that David Laid was actually natural? Coach Greg, in today's video, fitness icon David Laid has body dysmorphia. And it's not just me saying it, David Laid himself is admitting this. But still in my head, there was like this crazy just distortion, body dysmorphia. Do you really think that social media superstars, models, the best looking people in the world don't suffer from body dysmorphia? If anything, the better you look, the worse it's going to get. You're thinking, if I could just lose the weight and then I'll be happy. Well, the video title I'm looking says... Why getting shredded won't make you happy. I've been saying it in countless videos, but no one seems to think that Coach Craig is making any sense. Oh no, Coach Craig, you don't know what you're talking about. You just gotta bulk and cut back and forth. That is how you should do it. People keep dieting, trying to get to single digit body fat, thinking this is the epitome of health. That once you get there, you're not only gonna look amazing, you're going to feel amazing as well. But the sad reality, the harsh truth is, the leaner you get, the worse you're going to going to feel. And I'm not talking about getting to a healthy body fat percentage. Of course, I encourage everyone, become healthy, perhaps 15% body fat. But if you continue to diet, it's going to get worse. And remember, it's not a competition to see who can get the leanest. Leaner is not better. And so David Laid, who's been a fitness model practically his entire life, guy was discovered as a teenager, made a viral transformation, went from a skinny guy who was shredded to an aesthetic gym shark superstar. And the goal is to transcend that even though your egotistical construction that you're feeding is societally rewarded, right? So that's a trap that you could really, really fall into. Raise your hand if you understood a single word that this guy is saying. What David Lade is saying is that if you think that you have to be shredded to be happy, it's just not true. Society has certain expectations put on us. And we, as a society, we think that that's what we need to do. We look on social media, we see our favorite superstars, and we're thinking, yeah, that's what we should do. That's what we try to look like. But in reality, why do we think this way? It's not true. Do you think that a thousand years ago that people who walked around with aesthetic bodies, ripped six packs, were suddenly admired by everyone in the world? Of course not. And for the ladies out there, do you notice how every decade the beauty standards keep changing? Back in the day, curvy, Marilyn Monroe, that is the perfect beauty standard. After that, skinny. Can't have an ass, can't have a cookbook, can't have anything. They'll stick. Now you have to have implants. You have the smallest waist in the world with gargantuan bowling balls for glutes. And so it's almost impossible to look the way social media wants us to look. I was like 13 or 14 years old. Like I got into like weightlifting and then I took a lot of pictures of my progress, made a transformation video, then ended up going viral. And so how could we expect the guy not to develop body dysmorphia when he's literally famous for how he looks? Imagine the pressure, people judging you every single day. How good do you look? The whole reason that I got into working out was because of like very like generic stereotypical insecurities as being like extremely skinny, feeling all that. And so think of it. He got into the gym, started training because he was skinny. Then he starts to put on more muscle, starts taking photos, posting them on social media. Lo and behold, people love the way he looks. And with that comes more and more pressure. Takes a hundred photos, posts the best one with the best lighting, the best angles, and people love it. And so as you progress to becoming more and more famous based on how you look, you realize that people love you based on your appearance. And with that comes the desire to continue to look better. And perhaps you're looking at your photos and thinking, I don't even look that good. In the real world, yeah, it looks pretty good, but perhaps not as good as those photos. With the correct angles, lighting, photoshopping, and so on, people are gonna say, wow, that is the best physique on this entire planet. You're thinking, well, people are gonna meet me. And when they meet me, are are they going to be impressed or are they going to say, wow, I was expecting more. I thought you'd be leaner than that. I thought you'd have more muscle. And so with that comes even more pressure to fulfill other people's expectations. And so does the development of body dysmorphia. Even say like my senior year in high school. I remember I would just wear hoodies just all the time. He looks incredible. He's on social media, but yet when he's walking around, he's covering himself in a hoodie. He's got a baggy sweater on hoodie covering up his body. Doesn't want people to compare himself in real life to the pictures they see on social media. I look like a normal, reasonable human being with like an acceptable amount of like muscle tone, right? But still in my head, there was like this crazy just distortion, body dysmorphia. And so what do you think the end result of this? Does anyone think that David Laid was actually natural?
Raise your hand if to this day you think he's 100% natural his entire life. With the pressure of social media, the fact that he has body dysmorphia, and that he's covering up his physique because he feels pressure to live up to other people's expectations, how could you expect him not to turn to performance enhancing drugs? Then eventually why that transferred over into social media is it was like that thing just amplified even more in terms of just needing to look as good as I possibly could. And does this sound familiar? Do you think this is the only case? Take Alex Eubank, guy literally debating going on TRT. Why? Because he feels the pressure. He's developed body dysmorphia because he doesn't feel he looks good enough. The better you look, the more your expectations on yourself are to continue to look better. And eventually, enough is enough. The guy is dieting down, trying to get to single digit body fat, but it's hard. If you're natural, you're going to have lower testosterone levels. Especially you having such a big platform and always pushing, like being lean, 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 is making these kids that are like 16, 15, like young, wanting to start diet. And so what do you think happens? People turn to performance enhancing drugs. And can we blame them? And so the problem is we have to stop thinking that single digit body fat is the ideal. Leaner is not better. Yeah, I get it. You have to be shredded to win a bodybuilding competition. But for the rest of us in the real world, when you're not competing, do you really think it's important to strive to be single digit body fat? And perhaps you're thinking, yeah, but I want to look good because I want to attract a mate. Well, I've literally done videos on this. People asking, what is the ideal physique? And lo and behold, it's not single digit body fat. And so, yeah, it's fun to impress the boys, but at what expense? Is it okay at expense of your health? to crush your test levels. Also, the other guys would say, hey, dude, you have some amazing abs. Yeah, you get dopamine from that, but can't we get it from something else? And so if you become a slave to social media, thinking that you're only going to be worthy or valuable if you can get shredded, it has to stop. Please don't develop body dysmorphia. And warning, anyone, I don't care what sport you're in, if you're in a sport that involves weight classes, you're at the greatest danger. 25% of athletes, maybe more, of athletes competing in sports that involve weight classes, they have eating disorders. That's one in four. And so I've debated with a number of people, people saying, Coach Greg, you have an eating disorder yourself. And I'm like, why? Well, you eat low calorie dense foods. You're watching what you're eating. You're trying not to overeat calories. You're trying to stay low body fat. And I'm like, well, that's a great point, but... I feel healthy. I feel good. I don't have brain fog. I don't have low energy. I'm not starving all the time. My libido's good. It's not negatively affecting my life. I go out with my friends. I have a good time. And so how is that bad? Is there anything wrong with me trying to be lean? I don't think so. But if it came to the point where I'm lethargic, I have a lower sex drive, I'm saying no to my friends, I can't go out because I can't be around food, then yeah, I would say I have a disorder. But listen, for the most part, people who are involved in sports at the highest level, they are going to exhibit some forms of disordered eating. You can't expect an elite level athlete to just eat anything they want, to just go all in, to just not consider the foods that you're eating. You're going to eat intuitively, making smart and informed decisions on all the foods that you're eating. And to me, that is not bad. Think of it, almost half of society is already overweight. And so if you're actually eating normal, chances are you're probably overweight. And so if you exhibit disordered eating practice, perhaps you're counting your calories, you're watching how much sugar is in your diet, you're avoiding alcohol. These are not bad things, but if you take them too far, you strive for single digit body fat, you're lacking energy, you're not feeling good. You develop body dysmorphia, you don't like how you look, then it's bad. But if what you're doing is just simply controlling your diet and making smart, educated decisions, there's nothing wrong with that. And so I'm not saying that you should all just eat whatever you want, not care. And at the same time, I'm certainly not saying to starve yourself. Somewhere in the middle, there has to be a compromise. And so consider this, we all have a certain genetic set point. Somewhere's where our bodies were meant to be. If you go above that, you're too heavy. To me, that's a disorder. It's not good. Stop doing it. If you're 500 pounds, go on a diet. And at the same time, if you're 5% body fat and you're underweight, eat more. That's also not good. That previous thought pattern still exists, but it, it exists within a broader understanding so that when it arises, I could just recognize its arisal and then it'll just go away. And so how did David Lade get over his body dysmorphia? Well, frankly, he didn't. It's still there. It's still prevalent. He's getting better at dealing with it over the years of thinking about it. And when it begins to creep up again, thinking, oh, you're not lean enough. You don't have as much muscle. He's able to tell himself, no, no, don't think that way. You're okay. You look amazing. Don't sweat it. 
but it's a constant battle. And so regardless of the fact that he looks amazing, I'm sure you're looking at him right now thinking, if I could only look like that, I'd never have body dysmorphia. How could he possibly not be happy with his appearance? Listen, no matter how good you look, you're never going to be satisfied. That's why I keep saying halfway there. You don't need to achieve that dream physique. There's nothing wrong with trying to get there. The problem is if you're not happy during the journey. You should be happy right now. I don't care if you're 700 pounds. You should be happy. Nothing wrong with saying, I'm going to lose 500 pounds, but you should be happy along the way. You can't be thinking, I'm not happy now. I don't like my body. I'm too skinny. I'm too fat. I'm too tall. I'm too short. I'm too white. I'm too black. I'm too brown. Too blue. Stop thinking that. Be proud of who you are and everyone deserves love, but you know who should love you the most? Yourself. And if you can't learn to love yourself, how do you expect others to learn to love you? And so remember, nobody is perfect. Everyone is going to have things about their body, whether it's their face, their body, their appearance, their height, their weight, whatever. Everyone is going to have something. I wish this could be better. And there's nothing wrong with that. It's normal for the human body to try to be better than they are. There's nothing wrong with trying to get better. But when it continues to persist or it becomes obsessive, that is when it's gone too far. And so please, don't develop body dysmorphia. If you start going to the gym to improve your body, that is amazing. You're eating healthy, you're doing cardio, you're doing exactly what you should be doing. But don't think that you're not worthy. Don't think that you have to be better in order to deserve love. I didn't like necessarily implement like plan or like take any like steps or like it just sort of just organically just happened after just like contemplation and stuff. And so really happy to see David Laid opening up, sharing his stories of body dysmorphia. And so if you want to see more, please go and check out Chris Williams channel. He's interviewing David Laid. It's over an hour long. You can go and see David Laid explain this in further detail. And as always, I sell and promote supplements. But remember, you shouldn't be obsessive of supplements. You don't need to use any of these. These are just meant to be icing on the cake. If you don't have any money, you don't want supplements, you don't need a single supplement out there. Even though I'm selling them, of course I make money if you buy it. You don't need this. But if you are interested, you want to maximize your performance longevity, the number one supplement I would recommend, GO2 Max. The main ingredient, NMN, shown in double-blind placebo-controlled studies, not the placebo effect, not in mice, human studies, to have a dramatic effect on improving cardiovascular health, improving walking test scores by 50%. That is huge. I'm not going to details. I explained this in a number of videos. If you're interested, click the link in the description, code Greg, 10% off. And if you have no money, head over to the website offering a free diet and training program. It's over 50 pages. Unbelievable, 100% free. Trust me, you follow this well on your way to your health and fitness journey. But please be careful. Don't develop body dysmorphia on your health and fitness journey. Subscribe, click the bell button, comment for your algorithm. Please like this video if you like it. It could use way more subscribers. Under 50% of my audience are actually subscribed. So please click that subscribe button right now. Watch the bloops. Follow me on Instagram, Greg Doucette, IB Pro. And as always, the cookbook, training books, coaching plans by me and my team, the Circle Diet Book. That's my life work, how to lose weight, keep it off for the rest of your life. Also, the Harder Than Last Time clothing line. Please be sure to check that out. And on until next time, I am out.